Now I did a video about this. This is the Synodo Tempo Pad, and so many of you had so many questions about it when I plugged it into an RC600. Does it work with an RC500? Does it work with an RC5? How can I change the buttons? So today we're gonna go a bit deeper into this. We're gonna have a look at the software it comes with and what you can actually do with all of these. So I've plugged the tempo pad into my computer using the USB cable you get with it and we've got the software up on the screen. So once we've got it connected you've got the dials and every control that you need. The tempo pad can do three things when it comes to the pads. It can send no information which is its default. You can change it over to CC so it sends CC numbers or it can send PC numbers program changes. Now this is where it gets really clever. You can change these independently. So for example, I could have the bottom eight actually sending note values so I could play drums and then the top ones could actually be program changes. But for now, we're gonna stick with having it sending notes values to all 16. We've got three banks. Bank A is red, bank B is green, and bank C is blue. A nice little reference here is actually on the pad. You can see you've got the knob pad and you've got the bank pad. So the bank pad is in red, then you can go to green and then blue. So red is bank A, green is bank B, and blue is bank C. And the same for the control knobs here. So we've got red, green, and blue. Nice little thing with the control knobs. It actually shows a nice little LED underneath for each color. One thing I'd like Synodo to do is actually just update this firmware for the control knobs. I know you can see it on here, but it'd be nice to see it on here as well. Just like you got these little red markers, it'd be great to see the red markers somewhere on this software here. Now you can see a lot of information, but it's really, really simple when you break it down. Every one of them has a command. So you've got commands for the transports, you've got commands for the control knobs, and of course you've got commands for the pads themselves. So right now, for example, if you have a look at the 16 options here, every single pad is sending a note value. And we start here with pad number one, which is sending C1. It also shows you what MIDI channel it's on and which note it is. So we're on C1, MIDI channel one, 24. So then if I tap this, that would actually send a note out and that's what we want for the RC600 to play the drums. You can change any of these. So if you click on the key, we can actually click on C1 there. You can go right from C minus one all the way up to C9 and then G9. But we're gonna keep it the way it is for the moment. Should you wish to change it over to CC numbers, we just click this little tab here and you can see the CC has grayed out and we're now on CC number 24. If you go to PC, then you need to change it over to the PC number. So we've got number 24 there. We can change it over if you want to. And when you go over to CC, the option for momentary or toggle becomes available. With CC numbers, you can toggle something. So you say on or off or momentary. When you hold it down and let go, then it turns itself off automatically. Momentary is the default. So if you were to hold the pad down, and then let go, it would then turn on and then turn off in response. But for the pads themselves, we're sticking to notes because that's what we need to play the drum instruments on the RC600. As it is right now, I can say send to hardware and what this is gonna do is send all the information that we've pr changed or programmed up over to the tempo pad and it will save it there. So if I click that, it's real quick and it just sends that information straight away. You can save that information. You can say save or save as, and you can create a file that you could then reload back up whenever you want to through your computer. The software is available for both PC and Mac and it looks identical. But what we wanna do is we wanna actually play around with these. In the first video, we already had the drums playing with this and it also played with the RC500 as well. But what we wanna do is we wanna actually use these and we're gonna be using the assigns. So we're actually gonna be using the CC numbers to control volume and control volume of different things. Now this is where you need to actually have a plan, have a think about what you're gonna do. You don't just have four here, you actually have 12 control knobs. Maybe you wanna control the volume of every single loop. Maybe you wanna control the volume of every single input. It's up to you. I'd certainly get a piece of paper and a pen and write it out. For me and for what I need, I actually want to control four things, which is great because I only need one bank for now. I might wanna control more later on. It depends on how I'm playing. But I wanna control my microphone input, my guitar input, the volume of the loops themselves, and the volume of the rhythm. And that works quite well, four different controls, four different control knobs. So let's have a look at what they've got. And this is a good opportunity to write this down before you actually go over to your looper because you'll need to know which one's which. So the first one I've got here is actually on CC number seven and we've got a minimum of zero and a maximum of 127. Now that is MIDI CC control value. It is not the volume. So it is the minimum and maximum of each one. And when we get over to the looper, then we can actually change the volume depending on what the CC number is. The next one is 
CC number one, CC number two, and CC number 10. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change these because I want them to be a specific CC number. On bank C, there is nothing higher than CC number 71. So I'm actually gonna change these over to in the 70s range. So we're gonna actually change this to 75. This one's gonna be 76. This one's gonna be 77, and this one is 78. It makes it easy for me to remember as opposed to being random numbers. Now, one thing to bear in mind is actually the CC number of the pads. If you have lots of different things from MIDI going around, you've got a synthesizer and you've got something else, you've got like a foot controller, they will all need to be on their own MIDI channel. Now, if you don't have anything at all and you're just putting the tempo pad into the 600, then that's going to be fine because you can actually put everything onto MIDI channel 1 and then just tell the RC600 everything's on MIDI channel 1 and that's fine. However, by default, the drums on the RC600, as most synthesizers and most electronic equipment do, the rhythm system is on MIDI channel 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to change these over to MIDI channel 10 and that way we're not going to confuse the matter when we have the controllers on MIDI channel 1. So instead of changing these over manually and doing this many, many times, we have the option for auto populate. Auto populate is cool because what we can do is we can set things how we want it and we can do it really, really quickly. Now we're playing with note changes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the note channel over to channel 10. So if we do that now and click apply to bank A, you'll now see they've all very quickly, let me just move that other way. You can see there, they've all gone over channel 10. Bank B is still on channel one, so we'll apply it to bank B and then we'll apply it to bank C as well. So let's click send to hardware. And now all of these pads are now on MIDI channel 10. Right, so we know that the first four of these are five, six, seven, and eight, and I'm gonna have this as my volume for the guitar, volume for the vocal, depends on which one I use, and then we've got the volume of the loops, and then we're gonna have the volume of the rhythm. Now, before we unplug this and go over to the RC600, of course, you've got these six buttons as well, and you can change these for whatever you want. They are CC numbers or they are MC numbers, but the CC is probably the most useful. You've got, obviously, the print of rewind, go forward, stop, play, record, and loop, ironically. But you could obviously use these for whatever you wanted to and just change the CC number to make sure it matches. Make sure, obviously, it's on the same MIDI channel, MIDI channel 1, and that's going to be very, very useful. Right, let's go over to the RC600. Let's play around with the assigns. We don't need to do assigns for any of this. It just works. But we need to assign these four to make sure they work how we want them to. Let's go. So we have my rig here, this is the RC600, and we've got the Senado Tempo Pad. We plug the Tempo Pad in to both power, and we've also got a TRS MIDI going into MIDI in, so MIDI out here, and then MIDI in there. Without doing anything, what we can do is we can go into menu here, we go across one over to MIDI, and give this a click. So the control channel information is on MIDI channel one, and the rhythm channel is on MIDI channel 10. Now we set this to MIDI channel 10 by default. So this is gonna play C1, and there isn't actually anything on C1 on here. So on C sharp one, we've actually got our first sound. Now if we go up one on the pad, we'll carry on. And this is all dictated depending on which sound you have, which sound you have in the rhythm section. So in this situation, we go to loop, we go across one, and we've got rhythm. And you can see here, it doesn't matter what pattern we're on, it's what kit we're on. So we're currently on the studio kit. Let's go back to the first one. If we change this over to something like the cajon, And then if we move it over to something like the 808 stroke 909. So just from playing this, we know that the first one that we really want kick drum wise is up here. So we could change the note values of this in the software to actually be here if you wanted to. Of course, this doesn't play anything. But just by default, without changing anything on the RC600, we're on MIDI channel 10 for the rhythm. And this is on MIDI channel 10. It works. Now where this gets interesting is the four controllers here on the control knob on the red section. So what we've got to do is we've got to change these over using assigns. So to do this, we're going to go into menu, 
go across one and you'll see a sign. Now I have a couple of assigns set up already for things like my FS7 pedal and the way I use this machine. So I'm gonna use four assigns that are not used. So we're gonna go across one and I've got assigns five, six, seven, and eight. I haven't used them at all. So we're gonna use these for the four controllers that are here. Now, if you remember from our programming, what we did is we did 75, 76, 77, and 78. So this one is 75. So for the first assign, which is assign number five, we're gonna turn this on. We're gonna give it a click. The source is actually CC number 75. So if we hold this down, we can skip through these pretty quickly. And then we can get to number 75. And the mode we want is not toggle, we want it to be moment. And that way, if we change something momentary, it will stay that way. The action is the same. So we've actually got the lowest action here is zero. The highest action is one, two, seven, and that's mirrored here. If we go to the next page, it's asking us, what do you want to do with this assigned? So what we want to do with this one, this is going to be the mic volume. So that is actually for me, XLR2, so actually input number two on the voice. So we can actually go across over. We're not looking at tracks right now. We're gonna scroll and keep going until you can actually find the inputs. This is all the effects. You can go past all these. You can, of course, you could change effects on any of these if you wanted to. And there it is, mic level. So it's mic number two level. So I actually use the XLRs for both my guitar and my microphone. So mic number two is my microphone, and mic number one is actually my guitar. So it actually then asks you the minimum and the maximum value. And the maximum value I want is not 200. I want it to be a maximum value of 100. So therefore, if we dial this all the way up to the top, the maximum it will go is 100. If we dial this all the way down, the minimum it will go is zero. Now, the way to test this is we can actually go into the mixer. So if I now use this and move this, you can now see the mixer is moving. And if I keep going, it won't go any further than 100. If I scroll it down, the minimum it will go is zero. And this is all being done by MIDI. Let's do the next one. So this one's actually going to be the guitar, which is actually mic in one. So same process, we'll go into menu, go across one, we go to assign, We're using a sign we haven't used before, which is a sign number six. The source is CC number 76. We'll leave it on moment. Again, they're going to be the same. And this time we're going to use mic one. There we go, mic one, and this one, I don't want to go any higher than 90 because of the way my guitar is. So this way, that way, if I pull this all the way up to the top, it's only gonna go as high as 90 and I can drop it down. That way the vocal is slightly higher than the guitar. Let's test this and we can move this all the way up. There we go, it won't go any higher than 90. And then of course the, the minimum is zero. Now the other thing I wanna do is I wanna actually use this one for the volume of the loops and this one for the volume of the rhythm section. So let's use a sign number seven. I've not used that one before. And then what we'll do is we'll have this with so 75, 76. This is CC number 77. We're gonna leave it on momentary. And then we're gonna have this as loop level. Now I could set this as master level, but then if I do that, you can't hear the input, you can't hear the microphone or the guitar. I just wanna control the level of the loops. So we'll keep going and find that one. And there it is, loop level. But again, we don't want the loops to be really, really loud. We want it to be around about 90. Actually, I set them at 95. So therefore, the loops are never louder than me. So let's go back into the mixer. Let's go over, and there's our loop out there. So if we now move this, it'll only go as high as 95, and the minimum is zero. Now, the last one to do is rhythm level. I've actually got rhythm level here, but I don't want to bend down and do this. And this is going to be right next to me on my mic stand. So let's go into this one. Let's go into menu, across one, back into a sign, across one again. A sign number eight we've not used, so we're going to use that one. Turn it on, go into it. This is going to be CC78. And then we're going to go across and we're going to be controlling the level of the rhythm. And let's change that over to 90. That's pretty loud, to be honest. I'm going to set it around about 80. So now if we go into enter and we go over to the rhythm out, we can change this again. And there we go. And that's all set.
Now, if you want one of these, I've left links in the description box to go and pick one up at the best price I can find them. At one point, they were completely sold out, so grab one quick. And of course, it is a MIDI controller, which means you can control anything. We're using it for loopers today, but you could use it just to control your door, hence the transport buttons, or maybe just add it onto a synthesizer, or maybe your MIDI keyboard doesn't have pads, or like we've done, you can actually add the functionality for a looper. Now, if you haven't seen the first video about this, that's this video right here. And if you want to go and grab one of these, that's this little card right here. 